Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, we're going to look at how to create a connect wallet button to connect MetaMask to a decentralized app. Since this is probably the most common task in Web3 development, I just thought I'd make a dedicated video just for this so that people can use it as a quick reference. I've looked at a bunch of different approaches to doing this and put together the code that I think is the most concise and efficient. All right, so with that said, let's jump into the video. All right, so prerequisite number one is gonna to be to install MetaMask if you don't have it already. MetaMask is a browser extension, can be downloaded at metamask.io, or just Google it. And just go ahead and download it, follow the prompts to install. The installation process is super straightforward, so I'm not gonna even go through it in this video. But if you guys uh, run into any issues, as always, feel free to reach out. All right, the next step is to open up the IDE of your choice. I usually recommend Visual Studio Code, so that's what I will be using. And I'm going to open up the terminal window and I'm going to clone the starter repo. So this part's totally optional. Um, you can use your own project as well. But what this is basically is just a, a plain vanilla JS create react app with some added HTML and CSS just to give us something to work with to get started coding the connect wallet button. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video while this is installing. By the way, the clone link to the GitHub repo will be in the description of this video below. All right, the download's complete, so I'm going to go ahead and cd into the faucet dapp starter code directory. And let's go ahead and install the dependencies. So I'm going to run npm i for install. All right, and once the dependencies are installed, let's go ahead and run the app. So I'm going to say npm run start just verify that everything up to this point is working and looks okay. All right, and that should start the development server and open up the site in a new browser tab. If not, just go ahead and navigate to localhost 3000 and you should be looking at this. It's a uh, simple UI for a um, faucet smart contract. And if you're just here for the connect wallet button, then that's irrelevant. Uh, but here's the button and right now, of course, it's not doing anything. So we are in good shape to go ahead and start coding the functionality behind our connect wallet button. Okay, so I'm back over to my code editor and what I'm gonna do is expand the project folder and go into the source folder and I'm looking for app.js. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that and I'll make some more room here. So this is just the main file behind the, uh, the initial index page that we were looking at. It's just HTML at this point. And so what we need to do is detect if MetaMask is installed and if it is request the accounts or the, the one account that is currently active. So the way this works is basically once the MetaMask browser extension is installed, it will inject an API under the global window object. So that's gonna be window.ethereum. Okay, so what we need to do is first write some code to detect that window.ethereum is a valid object. If it is, that means MetaMask is installed and we need to request the list of accounts. If not, then we need to prompt the user to install MetaMask. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to define a new function called connect wallet. Okay, and this needs to be an async function. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is code an if statement to detect if window and window.ethereum are both available. Okay, so I'm gonna say type of window is not equal to undefined. That's the first condition. And then basically the second one is gonna be the same thing except if type of window.ethereum is not equal to undefined. So uh, if we get this far, then we're going to do a try statement. And we know that at this point, if the code execution gets here, that MetaMask is installed. All right, so I'll just take a quick note there. Okay. And so the, the next thing we need to do is sort of prompt the user to agree to connect. And once they approve that connection, we will retrieve the list of accounts. Okay. So since I anticipate that I'm gonna receive a list of accounts, it's actually an array of length one. I'm gonna set up a variable to receive that called accounts. Okay, and I'll say await. 
And here's where I can make use of the, uh, the API that's been injected by MetaMask, window.ethereum. And there is a method called request. And then inside the config object, I can specify what method I want to use. In this case, it's going to be something called eth underscore request accounts. Okay, and you can find this in the uh, MetaMask documentation if you want to read up more on this, but this is what we need to use here. And whoops, that should be a semicolon. All right, and so if we get down to the next line, that means that this has returned without an error. So let's go ahead and console log that account. So remember, this is going to be an array. And as of now, it's, it's going to be an array of one item. So we can reference that with account at index zero. Okay. And this could just be a string, but I think they made it an array just to sort of future proof it in case they need to add more values in the future. Oh, this is accounts. I'm getting this IntelliSense here to alert me that something was wrong. All right, so let's uh, set up a catch clause as well. In, in the event that we do get an error, we will just log that. Okay, so I'll say console.error and I'll say error.message. Okay, so this is our this is our attempt. This try catch right here is our attempt to fetch the accounts, and we're assuming that we're inside of the uh, the if clause that has detected that MetaMask is in fact installed. Now, if it's not installed, we need to run some code code just to alert the user. So I'll say else if I can spell that right. <laughs> so if that check if that initial check fails on the window .ethereum or or window, then we're going to say MetaMask is not installed. And we'll just console log a message to the user. And I'll say, please install MetaMask. All right, so the next thing we need to do is actually invoke this function from the button with an on click. So let's find our button. Here it is. So let's go right in this button HTML here and we'll add a on click event. And all we need to do is set the name of the function that we just defined, which was connect wallet. All right, go ahead and save. And let's test out what we have so far in the UI. All right, so hopefully this should update automatically. I'm gonna open up the console so we can hopefully see that first address logged. And I'm gonna put this at the bottom. Clear this. All right, let's go ahead and click the connect wallet button. All right, good sign. So our MetaMask is actually opening and it should ask me to confirm the connection. Oh, I'll have to enter in my password. And then after that, it should ask me if I would like to connect to this site. So I'm on account number one, I'll say yes, next, connect. And you see right here, this is the uh, first account, the account that I'm connected with right now, and so that's output to the console. So great, everything's working so far, beautiful. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually, so we're just logging this for now, but we need to actually take this and save it in state so that our UI can make use of that address further. So that'll be our next step. Okay, so in order to save that address, I'm gonna make use of the React hook use state, which basically allows us to save a little bit of data in our component. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna bring in two things here. We'll need use effect a little bit later, and to save the address, we'll, we'll need use state. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull both of those in right now. And this is coming from React. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is set up a variable, a state variable to hold that wallet address. So I'll say const wallet address and then set wallet address. Okay, and we'll give it an initial value of empty string. Okay, 
Now down here, once we fetch the account, the address, we'll go ahead and set that. So we'll use the set wallet address function. Okay, and we'll go ahead and pass in the same thing that we're logging, which is just the initial account that we're connected with. There we go, go ahead and save that. All right, now it would be nice to have some sort of visual indication that we're logged in, connected to MetaMask. Um, a lot of apps out there will show something like a truncated account number in the connect button itself, if you're connected, and then just show connect wallet when you're not connected. So let's see if we can do something like that. All right, so I'm gonna go down where we actually have the connect wallet text. Okay, I'm gonna delete that, and we're gonna just use a little bit of JavaScript to um, look at the address, and if it's populated, then we'll add the address uh, visually inside the button. If not, we'll just output the regular connect wallet text. Okay, so, okay, so we'll say wallet address dot length is greater than zero. So basically, if it's populated, uh, then do this, and we'll use a tenary operator here. So we'll say connected, and then we'll output the wallet address. And we'll format this in just a minute. For now, we'll just output the whole thing, okay? And then for the other condition, which we specify with a colon here, we'll just output our regular connect wallet text. Okay, go ahead and save. All right, so that's the basic format. And let's see, what can it not find here? Wallet address. Let me make sure that matches what I had here. Oh, I've got the spelling wrong up here. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, just make sure those match. Wallet address. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, the last thing we said we wanted to do was format this a little bit so it's actually truncated because you know the whole address won't really fit in our button. So we can use, a, again, a little bit of JavaScript magic here. We'll say dot substring, and this will allow us to access uh, just parts of the string. So we'll say from position zero to position six, you know, as if the string were an array here. Um, and then we'll say dot, dot, dot. And then we'll output like the last few characters. So the, the 0, 06 is giving us the first six characters of the address. And then for the last part, we'll say wallet address dot substring again 38. All right, go ahead and save that. All right, and let's see if this works so far. So we'll flip back over to our UI. And I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect from MetaMask and start fresh. MetaMask, that's your queue to open. Come on now. Sometimes it takes a while on my laptop here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this connected and Click on the triple dots here and disconnect. So I'm starting from scratch. I don't think I need to reload the page, but I will just for good measure. All right, so we'll say connect wallet. It looks like I have a little HTML problem here, but I'll fix that in a minute. Connect. Cool. There we go. A uh, little problem there, <laughs> I guess, with my end quote. Let's fix that real quick. Um, let's see, so the string starting here, substring that's closed. Then we say dot dot dot. Um, I think I've got one too many curly braces there. I think that's right. Let's save that. And so if I reload the page here you'll notice that the, the UI forgets that I'm logged in, so it's not maintaining that state, which we will fix. Um, that's our next object, basically, to fix that. But I'm just gonna, you know, once I hit connect, then it realizes that I'm, I'm connected, actually, because MetaMask under the covers is still connected, and so that looks good in terms of the truncation that I wanted to display. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly uh, fix that HTML problem. Basically, 
I shouldn't have put a body tag here because we have it in the underlying HTML page. We don't need it in the component. So I'll fix this uh, before this video even goes live so you guys won't run into that issue. Oh, but you know what? I need to um, actually not delete it, but just change it to a div. Um, since React needs to return one element, not like sister elements. So I'll just add that like that and that should take care of that problem. Okay, perfect. So basically where we're at right now, um, we've got the button and we're, we're handling pretty well the case where the user first comes to the site, they need to connect, give MetaMask permission to connect and then request or fetch the account number, right? What we're not handling is the case where we reload the page and so we, we lose the reference to our account number, but MetaMask is still connected behind the scenes. So what we need is we need another function that it doesn't prompt the user to connect permission wise, but just acknowledges that we're already connected and just fetch those accounts or that one connected account again. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. And this uh, function is actually gonna be very similar to our connect wallet. So I'm gonna actually copy this to save a bit of time. I'm gonna go below and I'm gonna paste that. And we're just gonna change a few things here. So um, in this case, we'll, we'll say instead of connect wallet, we'll say get currently connected accounts. Or I'll say get current wallet connected. Whatever you wanna name it is fine. Get current wallet connected, as long as it makes sense. All right, so we still need these kind of checks, so that part's not gonna change. Um, and we just need to change our method here that we're calling uh, from window.ethereum. So instead of request accounts, we just need to say eth accounts. So we're saying, we know we're already connected to MetaMask, we just need to get that list of accounts again. Which again, I keep saying list because it's an array, but really it's just one address, okay? All right, so the next thing we need to do is actually check that this returned a valid address. And if we have one, that means we're connected and we have the address. If not, that means we need to prompt the user to connect again. So let's say if accounts.length is greater than zero, okay, then we can set that address into state and also log it. So I'll grab both of these two statements and put them right in here. And if not, that means we lost the connection to the wallet or we didn't have it in the first place. So we need to alert the user. So we'll say console log, um, connect to MetaMask using the connect button. Okay, so far so good. Now, Lastly, we need to actually invoke this function from somewhere. So when do we actually want this function to run? That's the question. And from what we've seen, we kind of need this to run every time the page is reloaded. So we can make use of our use effect hook. So I'm gonna go right down here underneath my state variables. I'm gonna say use effect. Okay, this takes a function as an argument. And then inside that function we can simply invoke get current wallet connected. All right, and I'll just create a little bit of space here and go ahead and save that. All right, so let's go back to the browser and see if what we have is working so far. And I'm not seeing, I'm just doing a quick scan to, to see if there's any IntelliSense alerting me to any issues. I don't see anything, so that's good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect from MetaMask and just do a clean test from the beginning. All right, I've gone ahead and disconnected, so let's click on connect wallet. All right, I'll say next and connect. And there's our account information. Now remember last time when we refreshed the page, we lost this, so let's see if we're retaining it now. Page refresh, great, I'm still seeing it. All right, and let's go ahead and disconnect. All right, so I've disconnected my wallet. I'm not seeing a change yet. Let me refresh the page. And now I see the change. Okay, great. So, so far we've made an improvement in that when we refresh the page, we're now able to more or less uh, maintain the state. But we still have one problem, and that is when we 
we made a change to the current account or the current connection state of the wallet, we didn't see an update reflected immediately. So that's the last thing we're gonna go ahead and fix. All right, so again, we can utilize the injected window.ethereum API and leverage the window.ethereum on accounts changed event handler to detect whenever we switch to a different account in our wallet or, or just disconnect altogether, all right? So again, I'm gonna make some use of the code that we already have and take advantage of code reuse here by copying this function and I'm gonna paste it down here because a lot of things are gonna be common like the, uh, the window.ethereum checks and so forth. So I'm gonna rename this function add wallet listener. So we'll invoke this again in the use effects hook so that this gets set up right away once the page loads. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this entire try catch clause. We don't need that here. So I'll say window.ethereum.on, okay, and then pass in the name of the event handler, or sorry, the name of the event, changed. And then this is a pretty familiar pattern um, where the second one, the second parameter is gonna be the function that we want to execute when that event gets triggered, okay. Oops, sorry about my typing here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this will take a list of accounts and I need to make sure I close this properly. Oh, I'm missing an end quote here. There we go, <laughs> that should be better. Okay. All right, so inside of this, we'll say set wallet address Accounts at position zero, at index zero. And we'll do our same console.log. And again, we'll log accounts at position zero. Okay. And what does it not like here? Set wallet address. Oh, looks like I've got another spelling mistake up here. Oh, God. All right, let me just fix that everywhere. I'm sure you guys spotted that much earlier than I did. So it took me a second to figure that one out. I was like, what's going on here? Oops. <laughs> okay. Just gonna have to fix that manually. Set wallet address, set wallet address. Okay, much better. Sorry about that. And things went kind of crazy with my find and replace there, as it often does. <laughs> All right, so, and then in our else clause, we actually need to set this back to the default value, which was an empty string. Right, and this will handle the case in case they disconnect, right? And there's no longer an account address. All right, all right. go ahead and save that, and then I'm gonna grab the name of the function, and we'll go ahead and paste that into our use effect. Go ahead and save your code. I'm gonna take a quick check and make sure there's nothing funky going on here. Uh, funky in a bad way. <laughs> all right, looks good. Let's go ahead and do our, run our test again. So what I wanna do here is just disconnect everything and start our test over from scratch. All right, fresh test. So connect wallet. Again, that's gonna open MetaMask and ask me to basically approve the connection to this app. So I will go ahead and do that. I'm on account one, which we're logging correctly here and we're displaying correctly in the button. So that's all looking good. And if I refresh the page, I should expect to see that retained here basically, perfect. Now let's see if I change accounts. Um, let's make sure that the UI is being updated accordingly. And by the way, if you don't have a second account in your MetaMask wallet, it's real easy to create one. Uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, right here, create account. So you can just click that and give it a name. It just defaults, I think, to account two. All right, so yeah, and to change accounts, you just do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and click on account two. 
and um, connect. Yeah, there it is. Cool, and I can see that that new account number for account two is now reflected here in the button, as well as being logged. And um, I think the final test we have to do is just disconnect and make sure that the state is going back to our default button text. All right, so I'm gonna click on connect and you may have to disconnect from both of these manually, kind of like that. Okay, whoa, what happened? <laughs> Something weird happened. Uh, not quite what I was expecting. Uh, so I think I'm checking length on accounts somewhere, probably in the case that there's, there's no accounts, I need to add an additional check to the make sure that um, we have an account before I access it. Oh, okay, okay, that's the problem. So we're using wallet address. We need to, I think we just need to add another condition right here, right? So we'll say wallet address and wallet address length is greater than zero. And I just like to combine these kind of, when these get a little bit more complex, I like to combine them. Oh, and it's gonna remove that. Okay, it's saying I don't need that. All right, all right, I'll go with that suggestion. No worries. Okay, that code saved. Let's try it one more time. So I'll say connect wallet. Okay, we know this part's good since we've been through it a couple of times now. Once we get our, our disconnect working, then we'll be good. All right, so I'm gonna say three dots, disconnect. Cool, there we go. No more red, and, and our UI is reacting appropriately with our default text. All right, great. So um, that basically wraps up the connect button. So we've, we've covered all the cases there. Uh, once you connect, we, we reflect that in the UI. If we refresh the page, we maintain that state. If we change to a different account, we reflect that in the UI. And if we disconnect altogether, we also reflect that. And uh, now we've, we've tested all those scenarios and we don't have any errors, so we are good to go. All right, well, that concludes the Connect Wallet Button tutorial. If you guys like this kind of content, uh, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. There's a lot more tutorials in the works and on the way, uh, mostly blockchain related. So yeah, uh, appreciate you guys checking this one out and I will catch you in the next one.